started off as a, a simple ram paddock. <laughs> By 1903, a great snowfall happened, and it killed most of the stock. By the 70s, the first vines were trialled and planted. But the rabbits and the sheep got to them. Drunks. So what happened next? We catch up with Guy from Mount Rosa Wines to find out the full story. So you're going to lay that question on me again? <laughs> I can't sure what I was. Um, so when did you make the switch from um, wool to wine? Probably uh, late 90s, the writing was on the wall a little bit in terms of cash flow with uh, fine wool. Mm. Uh, so the wine industry was starting to poke its head up around here. The neighbours across the road had planted, uh, people down the road, peregrine. Um, so we thought that we'd give that a try. Yeah. So it took us a couple of years to um, source plants and start planting. The first vines went in November 2000. We went and tore some vines out from um, Felton Road that they didn't want anymore. Oh, it's right. Sauvignon Blanc. And uh, the first one that we produced, we made 22 cases, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, that was bottled in 2002 and it was truly awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So did you have any idea, any knowledge of how this industry worked and how to, how to produce from grape to bottle kind of thing? We probably learned as we went rather than learning before we started. Yeah. Um, not a classic way of getting into, uh, into the wine industry, <laughs> but there'd be a lot of There'll be a lot of people like us out there. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Let me just... So that's about 90 acres or 35, 36 hectares of vines. Oh. Two, two trellising systems. So this one here, as you can see, is considerably Ooh, higher. Yeah. And this one over here, which is uh, called VSP, <coughs> this fruiting zone's much lower. So what they do is they come along and say, okay, well someone wants this, uh, this particular clone here and they go out and they harvest a piece of wood like that and then they've got their um, rootstock uh, that they want and they take a bit of that and then they graft them together so they make a bit of a, this is pretty agricultural, but they'd, they'd um, you know, make a, a V or something like that mm -hmm. and they'd stick them together put a bit of tape around it, yeah. put a wax over it to protect it and then they'd stick that in some rooting hormone and sawdust to promote some roots. Mm. You can see how the bottom of the plant's skinnier than the top. Yeah. All these different clones do different things when you blend them together. So you made oh, it. there he is! Hey, you <laughs> made it! Come on! Well, I think it's such a lovely day, don't you? Yeah. Uh -huh. The pink stuff. The pink stuff. Um, so Pinot Gris came from Pinot Noir. Yeah. And Pinot Blanc was a further derivative of Pinot Gris. So it's not a blend of Pinot and Sauvignon Blanc. It's its mm -hmm. own varietal. Uh, we call that Mr. Dangerous. Mr. Dangerous. Mr. Dangerous. <laughs> really easy drinking. Pretty on the nose. Nice texture. Lovely sort of lunchtime wine. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. There's only about 11 hectares of that planted nationally. So it's a very... Uh, unusual grape variety mm. and um, why do you think it's so unusual though? Uh, honestly I don't know the answer to that but I, I suspect that if I just took that to a retailer and said sell that everyone would walk past it because they've never heard of it or tried it uh, but in here where people get an opportunity to uh, uh, <coughs> to try it and they go well that's amazing and mm. uh, more often than not we send a few bottles out the door so yeah. Uh, yeah, really, really nice to have just a point of difference in here. Yeah, and that's, totally. that's probably our, uh, our point of difference there. How's that rosé? It's, really, it's going down really well. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Yeah, good on you. <laughs>
Well, what a great way to kickstart this virtual wine experience. Together with Altitude Tours and LWB TV, we hope to uncover the stories around our thriving wine region. Cheers to you, Mount Rosa. I love the relaxed atmosphere that you provide, but we can't get too comfortable. We gotta go onwards to our next stop. This is Lauren Preble out for our virtual wine tour. So you actually do the wood smith no, <laughs> writing no, on no, the back. No, 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 no. <laughs> Can you give me <laughs> a rundown of some no, of the poetry? Dean, Dean tells me that they sit around wearing crocheted hats naked in a circle holding hands. 